Hello and welcome to the Aston Martin DBX 707. I'm going to talk you through the car. I'm going to show you everything um, I've learned with it. I've had it for a few days now and yeah, it, it's really blown my mind. I think it's probably the most fun I've had in an SUV for a while. Well, until my Cayenne Turbo GT comes and my Urus Performante. But for now, um, I'd like to say thank you to Aston Martin for letting me borrow this car. It's been amazing. I've had a great time with it and it's really opened my eyes to where the brand's going. So I'm going to dive deep into this car and explain to you all the interesting facts that I know about it and how it is to drive. I'm going to take you on a drive with me. Um, not right now, not this very second. If you see me change clothes, it's because it's actually very wet now. It just started raining when I wanted to take it out for you guys and film a segment. But instead, I'm going to talk you through the car, what I've learned and explain what the Aston Martin DBX 707 is. So, Aston Martin DBX 707, 707 PS, or I like to say horsepower. The figures aren't the same, so I think it actually works out to about 695 horsepower, but 707 sounds better because it goes with the 707. I think they actually chose that number because it's very similar to 007, who Aston Martin have a very strong connection to. Um, the car is amazing. It is the fast Ur version of the DBX. So that means it's got um, a tuned engine, so putting out more performance. They've taken out the ZF 9-speed uh, gearbox and replaced it with a 9-speed wet clutch. So the shifts are much faster, much snappier, and much more precise. Um, the ZF 8-speed and the ZF 9-speed gearboxes, my main issue with is them is that they feel quite sluggish, not in terms of shift speed, but in terms of, it feels like you're, they're dragging gears through and that's because it's a planetary gearbox system and it works using maths and very interesting things that I will not go into right now but yep this is a wet clutch so open close you feel it it does it it shifts fast when you shift down it gives you the gear you want when you want it which is amazing and also if you want to drive a manual it'll keep it in manual for you which is nice although when you get to the top of the rev range it will shift up the car makes use of a 48 volts um, anti-roll system uh, technology that we've seen in many other cars the implementation here is very very good when you're in cruising GT mode, the car is super comfortable and very refined. As soon as you whack it into Sport or Sport Plus, it will just stay flat through every corner. When I mean every corner, I mean every corner. I took this out on country roads last night after picking it up and it was amazing. I'm pretty sure if I went out with my friends as we normally do and they were in their supercars and I decided to take this, I would 100% be able to keep up uh, with them. I think before you start to see the difference, it will take some very hard driving from whoever's in a supercar. Also, when I was driving back, my friend Ish was in his F8 Tributo. The 707, we lined up on the motorway, we floored it, and until very, very high numbers, the 707 kept up pretty much neck and neck. And he was shocked, I was shocked. And it just made me kind of fall in love with this car, originally when the DBX came out, I wasn't a massive fan of the design, but I feel like the more aggressive styling and the more refined um, interior of the 707 really speaks to me. And um, especially after driving it now, I'm just like, wow, this car is just phenomenal. This car does have three chamber air suspension, so it rides very well. The, oops, just getting pinged. Um, it rides very well. They've retuned the chassis and retuned the suspension geometry. Um, I'm pretty sure they've added a lot of negative camber because it is very pointy into the corners. I'm not sure if it's gonna be anything like the Cayenne Turbo GT, which I'm yet to drive, but from what I've heard, they're quite similar um, until you get to the edge of performance. Also, they've shortened the final drive ratio of the gearbox so that you could fly through the gears a bit more faster, have a bit more shifting going on, just make it a bit more sporty. Um, other than that, the improvements that I know of are things like the exhaust, they've lightweightened it a bit, they've removed the iron brake discs and replaced them with carbon ceramic, so performance brakes, so that means less unsprung mass. They've also recalibrated the steering and recalibrated the overall drive system. So yeah, I'm not going to take the car out now, like I said, it's wet, so if you see me change clothes, ignore that. <laughs> I'm going to take the car out for you guys, I'm going to show you what it can do, what I feel about it, and yeah, let's figure it out. Couple launch controls? I think so. So here is the Aston Martin DBX 707. Good morning. I have changed clothes as you can see. It's a very cold morning, so ignore my voice, please. Um, one thing I can say about the Aston Martin now that I've got in it this morning is that the doors all have different levels of force required to close them. Um, this definitely, or hopefully isn't by design. 
but it is quite frustrating. The driver's door is incredibly light. The passenger's, passenger door is incredibly heavy and the rear doors are really, really heavy, uh, as in they don't want to open. Uh, I've got my hoodie because it's a cold morning and I've got all my equipment set up. I've never really taken such an in-depth equipment set up on a video, so I do hope you guys appreciate this. Um, we're gonna head out and I'm gonna take you on a few roads, see how you like it. Hopefully this video turns out well. If it doesn't, I apologize, but yeah. Uh, should we get started? I think we should. There's some less shaking for you. So, the Aston Martin DBX. Um, four litre uh, V8 engine, the same that is inside all the new AMG cars, aside from the two litre ones. The engine in this guy puts out 707 PS, which is a lot. It is very sunny, I should have brought my shades. Um, which is a lot of power. A lot of people say 707 horsepower, as do I. It's not 707 horsepower. Uh, PS is a different measurement. I think it works out at about 697 horsepower. I think PS is the German measurement of power. But Aston Martin clearly wanted to use that because it sounds closer to 007. The car is wide. The car is tall and the car is fast. So as I drive around these roads on cold tires on a damp Sunday morning, I'll try and show you how athletic the car can be. The car has been upgraded from the standard DBX, where that car uses the nine speed ZF transmission. This car uses a nine speed wet clutch. What that means is better performance and more responsive feedback. They've also tuned the final drive ratio of the car, so it's shorter, giving you better acceleration. And they have also retuned the three chamber air suspension. The brake rotors are also larger, recalibrated for performance. There's a lot of cyclists out this morning. We also get a retuned steering setup. Uh, in this car, I'm not sure if the steering setup really appeals to me. It seems to be a bit on the light edge, but I see why Aston Martin has chosen to do that, as it means the car can tread the fine line between the oh, tunnel. This might be a good time to do launch control. Which means that the car can tread a fine line between luxury and performance is what I wanted to say. from 0 to 60 in 3.1 seconds or 3.2 seconds to be fair it's all flipping relative at those speeds the wet clutch system is miles better than a ZF8 speed obviously a ZF8 speed or 9 speed is better for towing and better for luxury and better for moving weight but this is better for performance as I cruise behind this wonderful Toyota. I'll tell you a bit more about the luxury factors of the car. Uh, the car uses special leather bred from hairy cows in a paddock that doesn't have any barbed wire. This ensures that the skin of the cows is pristine, smooth and clean for when they slaughter them to layer them throughout the car. Gosh, this car's fast. When I first drove the DBX, um, Aston Martin invited me to Millbrook to try it out and I drove a DBX off-road, the standard 550 horsepower version and it was okay. It was a very Cotswold spec with red leather and wooden inserts so it's not something I would option for myself. However, this version is more me with the dark leather. I like the yellow. I don't like the white stitching. I do would have preferred black stitching and maybe darker seats, but I could, I could live with this interior. <laughs> it is 
mind blowing. A vehicle weighing over two tons, moving as this is. This car features 48 volt anti-roll technology, something that's become more and more common these days as cars get heavier and heavier, especially due to things like electrification. But in this model, it's pure, for pure performance. Keeps the car flat through bends. Keeps the car compliant when you want to go fast, because I just heard the sound of something not recording anymore. And it is my 360 camera. Um, as we continue. So when I went to Aston Martin, they explained that this car is rear biased most of the time. Until you have no grip at the front, the rears are the only thing driving the car. I actually don't know where I am. Which is funny because I drove here, didn't I? I, hope, I really hope this is recording well because I'm having a whale of a time. So yeah, Aston Martin no longer want to be their elder man's car and instead they want to be more seen as a fun brand, more comparable to Ferraris and Lamborghini while still maintaining their luxury routes. So cars like the Valhalla are coming out, which is the 1000 horsepower um, supercar from Aston Martin, more of a hypercar I would say, more of the, you know, La Ferrari and that kind of region. They are also releasing cars like the 707 to snag some of that Urus market. I mean, do I think it's working? I think it's getting there. I think it's gonna be a journey for them. I don't think it's gonna happen overnight. I think this is a very good first attempt at a performance SUV and it's a darn, darn good car. I still think things like styling need to be worked on and appeal and the way that the brand is positioned against its um, competitors. I think that, oops, speed bumps. Let's see what the car's like over speed bumps. And then I'll continue. So I'm not gonna slow down that much. What is that sound? I just, uh, anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, so compared to its competitors, it, it is glorious. Where the Lamborghini Urus is a bit more vulgar, I would say this is a bit more elegant, a bit more you know, understated, which is nice. Do you know who tends to look at this car the most? Old white men. And that is just a fact. And I think that's because that is Aston Martin's demographic. And it always has been Aston Martin's demographic. These roads would be amazing if it wasn't for the speed bumps. All in all, this car is excellent. It handles like a beast, an absolute beast. I haven't got a negative thing to say about this car. I really don't. Like, I, and it's funny because I wanted to not like this car. The DBX, I have never really liked. I saw the styling of it, I was like, yuck. And now this, I've fallen in love with it. I have got a Cayenne Turbo GT on order, and I've also got an Urus Performante, so the plan was to get the Cayenne Turbo GT, drive it about for a bit, switch it for the Urus Performante, and enjoy that for a few years just because the residuals on the Urus Performante is so good and the residuals on the Cayenne Turbo GT are so good. But I think this is something that I'd actually throw in the mix. The only thing that's putting me off is again, residual value. Will this car hold its value? When you come to sell it in two years, are you gonna be upset? Because when you sell an Urus, you're never upset. Um, I really, 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 really love this car now. For a 230,000 pound car, I can say that you are getting bang for your buck. This car pretty much does everything, literally everything. I'm impressed by it, I'm so impressed. Where am I? Because I do not know. That is a blind corner and it's flipping terrifying. the car does push you from the rear as opposed to dragging through with all fours like most SUVs there is a touch and when I mean a touch I mean a slight touch of understeer in this car but it's not as bad as most SUVs I have driven 
So now that I'm on top of this hill, is this zoomed out? So now that I'm on top of this hill, um, I just want to say this car is amazing. Honestly, Aston Martin, you've actually blown me away and I feel bad for ever doubting you. One thing I feel is that this car is going to pass a lot. One thing I feel is that this car is going to pass under a lot of people's radar and that's unfortunate, but it's such an amazing car. Residual values are a bit of a worry. Right now they're going for like literally what you buy them for. I don't know if they'll ever go for over um, on the used market, but I think that you won't be out of your money necessarily too much. It's just such a gorgeous car. And this color, this spec is just outstanding to me. A few things I would change about the car. Steering wheel's a little bit too light for me. I would also maybe provide um, the ability to have a harsher damping mode, uh, just, just a little bit harsher, just so you can feel more in tune. Brake travel is kind of excessive, which is a bit scary at times, but it does the job. You get used to it and it, it is an amazing machine. That, that What the engineering they've put into this has just blown me away. Um, it's got a massive wheelbase, but it doesn't feel like it when you're driving because of that four wheel steering and because the suspension um, geometry is so well set up. Honestly, guys, if you have the opportunity to buy one or if you're looking at a DBX, I would say scrap that, get yourself a 707. Um, but when the Urus Performante comes out and the Urus S, I think they might have it. Cayenne Turbo GT is a completely different kind of car. That is a super SUV in terms of that is performance focused with 2.6 degrees of negative camber on the front axle, which is insane for an SUV. Um, so yeah, that'll provide a more harsher ride, I think, and it'll be a lot more performance focused. I get mine in December, they've told me. So as soon as I get that car, I'll be able to give you a baseline because I've tested this one. I'll give you any, like my thoughts on both and uh, yeah, this is amazing. That wet clutch has made all the difference and also um, the suspension setup is just phenomenal. Wow, what an amazing car. Anyway, remember to like and subscribe. Uh, I will be providing more content like this, hopefully. And yeah, you can check me out on Twitter, on Instagram, and especially on my TikTok, which is mostly car focused. My TikTok is Tommy Music, uh, even though I only talk about cars. But yeah, have a nice day and I'll see you soon.